thank you everybody uh, in the audience for joining for this week's continuing education webinar. These continuing education webinars are, as always, designed to empower you in your Bitcoin journey through education by covering in-depth topics, uh, you know, related to your Unchained Vault and your keys. Uh, now they are the first Friday of every month, so make sure not to miss uh, November's session. That's going to be coming up. I can't believe we're already at the end of 2022, um, but over the course of 2022. There were some cool improvements, some cool upgrades that happened to your vault. Um, so today's topic is how to get the most out of your Unchained Vault, and really your Unchained account more broadly. So I'm joined today by Carl Krecke, who's a director on our concierge team, and Connor Dent, who's a director on our client solutions team as well. We're really gonna go through um, a pretty packed agenda, which I'm excited to dive into here. So what are we gonna be covering today? Well, Carl's gonna give us a keys overview, right? Everything is built on a foundation of keys. So we wanna be talking about managing your keys, where you go to see your keys, the importance of key checks. Uh, and then he's gonna pass it off to me. I'm gonna cover vault overview, right? Depositing to your Unchained Vault, withdrawing, uh, the new vault tools menu that might be uh, kind of newer to you if you haven't checked out your Unchained Vault page in a while. Then I'm gonna hand it over to Connor because as I'm going over the vaults, you're gonna see some buttons about loans or buy Bitcoin, these additional services we offer, and Connor can really knock it out of the park covering those aspects of the Unchained platform as well. And we'll wrap up with a Q&A. So as a reminder for those viewers for the webinar, if you do have a question throughout this process, throughout the entire presentation that we give, please put your question down into the questions box in the lower right-hand side of the Livestorm webinar. Uh, that just ensures that our team is a nice place to go view the questions. Uh, do not put questions in the chat. Uh, if you can, please make sure you allocate them over to that questions box. Um, so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Carl uh, to you know, do the keys overview and tell us all about keys. Uh, Carl, what can you tell us about keys? All right, yeah, thank you, Tyler. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, and like Tyler said, I'm going to be covering keys. Keys are really the foundation of self-custody and unchained multi-signature vaults and our other financial services. And part of holding keys is managing them effectively. You know, we want to understand how to use keys across vaults or in multiple contexts. And then um, key checks, uh, because it's part, part of our job is to help clients navigate holding keys securely and easily. And... Um, to do that, there are some important things we want to consider um, when it comes to what we call like good key hygiene. Um, and we're going to go through a, a little demo here. Here we are. And so here you can see um, just at the home page of my dashboard. And right now we're actually in my account for my IRA. Um, I have, if you go look here on the left side under this keys tab, I have two keys, two devices that are used in my IRA account, but I also can use them in my personal account as well. So the same two devices, um, the same two seed phrases um, can be used in multiple contexts, multiple vaults, really to keep your life easier. You don't want you know, a, a growing number of things to keep track of just to effectively organize your Bitcoin. So that's a really powerful tool um, to use just a few devices to create everything you need to manage your Bitcoin. Um, and then the, the next step after that is, you know, once you have keys in place, keeping up with them. Um, private key ownership in Bitcoin is not really a set and forget sort of thing. Um, we, good, part of good hygiene is making sure every so often you know where your devices are, you know where your seed phrases are. And one great feature that we have in the website and on this key page as well is what we call a key check. Um, key check is really a way to make sure your device is working every so often and sort of has two functions. One, you have your device so you know where it is. Um, the second is that it's still working. It can still sign a transaction. And to check that, you can plug in a device, hit check now, and it takes you through the instructions um, of how to make sure your device is still working. And, we have some great videos um, on, on our blog and on our knowledge base of just how to do that, uh, taking it through step-by-step step how to perform a key check. Um, and key checks are by default every 90 days or once a quarter. And, you know, that timeline is really, you know, once it hits 90 days, a great time to do some other um, exploring to, you know, make sure your seed phrases are still intact, that they're not compromised yet. Um, and maybe to do 
a quick um, check to see that the device or the firmware on your device is still up to date. You know, these um, applications like Trezor Suite and Ledger Live do a really great job of notifying you when there's new firmware released. Um, and when it comes to Cold Card, the other device we support, you know, a quick 30 second Google search can tell you um, if there's new firmware or if it's been three months since you've checked, um, a good time to do that. And we also have um, great demos about how to update firmware for all three devices we support. Um, and really this, this section of keys and key ownership um, is just meant to get you thinking about um, you know, checking in every so often, making sure your, your setup is, is still working. Um, and so with that, I'll pass it back to Tyler to cover the next step, which is actually building a vault with your keys. Awesome. Thank you, Carl. That was a really good point about key checks being just, you know, more than plugging in a given device um, or, you know, sharing if you're using a cold card, sharing that public key file to your micro SD card. Uh, you should really be treating key checks as holistic key overviews, you know, a key health checkup, right? It's like, do I know where uh, my keys are being stored? Do I know they're being secured safely? Um, do I know the whereabouts of, of my seed phrase? You know, there's all these things that go into a key check. Um, so doing it at that set cadence um, is a really powerful reminder. So thank you, Carl, for going over that. Um, what I'm going to be covering today, of, you know, coming off of Carl's foundation of keys is really a vault overview. So with your Unchained Vault, we want to be covering how to deposit Bitcoin. Uh, you know, within the past couple months, uh, past couple quarters, we've been introducing some pretty cool improvements and upgrades to the Vault platform. So I want to just make sure to go over that again. Uh, when it comes to depositing, showing you, you know, that you get a new address for each deposit, uh, and stressing the importance of confirming your Bitcoin address on your device. Uh, we have withdrawing and transferring Bitcoin, what the differences between the two are and how to do them. And then a vault tools menu deep dives. The vault tools menu is something, again, newer over the course of the past couple of quarters. We want to make sure that we have a full overview there so you know how to effectively utilize this vault tools menu. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is share my screen for my demo account and give you a, just a run through of the vault tools uh, and your vault, uh, just vault page in general. So. And with that, you should be seeing my home screen now. And now Carl did a great job of covering keys. So what I wanna do is kind of work down this menu on the left-hand side to vaults. And when I'm looking at my vaults here, you see I have two vaults created. So, you know, as Carl was talking about, you can add as many keys as you'd like. You can create as many vaults as you'd like. They're gonna be showing here on this vault menu. Uh, now what I have here is I have my test vault and I have my webinar vault. So you can imagine which one I'm gonna be doing a deep dive into today. Um, it is going to be the webinar vault. So let me go ahead and click into the vault to open up my vault page. So right away, you know, and in your eyes might be drawn uh, to this buy Bitcoin button up here uh, right away. So we'll, uh, we'll let Connor talk about that in just a little bit. But your unchained vault, a uh, couple things to talk about as we're looking at this interface. Um, even if you've seen this interface before and you've been a longtime client, uh, really helpful to do a refresher of this stuff. So I have webinar vault up here in the upper left hand corner of the screen. Um, now, if I want to change the name of my vault, maybe to something more creative, um, I do have this three dot menu in the upper right. I can click on this three dot menu and rename my vault whenever I'd like, which is kind of a nice thing to do just for aesthetics, just to stay organized. Um, that is, you know, especially if you're, you have multiple vaults in play and you want to keep your vault separate and organized, um, naming them is a great way to do that. So as we work down from this balance and this title up here, um, what we do see is the transact tile. So this transact tile gives us some options for the inflows and outflows of our Bitcoin. So working from left to right, we have deposit here. So let me go ahead and click on deposit. And what you're gonna see is this deposit uh, address pop-up modal show, probably familiar to, to you on the call, um, but if it's not, here's what it is. We have your Bitcoin address. And we give it to you in two formats. You have a QR code, makes it really nice and handy. If you have a mobile Bitcoin wallet or a Bitcoin exchange on your phone, you wanna send Bitcoin to your vault, you can scan that QR code to send Bitcoin right to your vault. And if you're using a personal vault. And we also have this text-based address for you down here. It starts with three NY. Now this address is where you could copy and paste into your given exchange. Um, now to copy it, try to make it as easy as possible for you. Uh, you can actually just click on this address and that little green 
a check mark's going to appear on the clipboard on the right hand side. You don't have to like click and drag to try to get all the characters. You can just click on this address and it will copy right to your clipboard on your computer. Now, this button down on bottom says confirm on Trezor. It's really, really important, a cool capability of these hardware wallets when you're using them with multi-sig and unchained vaults. You can confirm this address that you're being shown here on your computer screen, you can confirm it on the screen of your device. Just helps you know that you know, your given browser, in this instance, I'm on Google Chrome, just helps you know that Google Chrome isn't throwing in a fake character there, that your address was built correctly. Um, now, pretty easy flow to do that with a Trezor device. If you're using a Trezor, you plug in your Trezor, you can select confirm on Trezor, and then choose which device you currently have plugged in, and you would be able to select next and connect to your Trezor to confirm that device or confirm that address rather. Um, for cold cards, there is the opportunity for you to confirm this address on the cold card as well by using the address explorer on the cold card. And we do have resources out there for you that show how to do this. Um, for ledger devices, the ability to confirm your address on your device isn't quite there yet with ledger devices, but it is something that uh, we're hoping gets added to the ledger firmware uh, here in the next couple of quarters. So this deposit address, one really cool thing I want to make sure to mention you know, this text underneath deposit address up top says you will receive a new address for each deposit. So if I make a deposit here to this address and then maybe I log in, you know, tomorrow or sometime over the weekend to make another deposit, I'm going to be given a new fresh address to deposit to. Now, this is to stay in line with Bitcoin privacy best practices, right? If, uh, if Carl was going to pay me uh, and I gave him this address, well, if I kept on depositing to this address and he already had it, he'd be able to see over time all the Bitcoin that I'm stacking up. And maybe that's private information that I don't want him to know. So if you use a new Bitcoin address for each deposit, it does help improve your privacy guarantees there when it comes to you know, people who have uh, pay, paid you in Bitcoin, they might have your Bitcoin address. So that's that deposit button. Now, as we work our way more to the right, we see both withdraw and transfer. So right away, you might be thinking, well, okay, what's the difference between the two? Um, well, really, you can think about transfer as somewhat of an internal transfer. Now, it's still a Bitcoin transaction. You still need to sign with both of your devices. But what you're going to be doing is you have a really easy way to send Bitcoin to another uh, vault that you have in the platform. So if I were to select transfer here, you see it's going to say select an account. And I'd be able to see, okay, well, I have my test vault, the other vault that I have. And it'd be a really nice way for me to just click on that test vault and pre-populate that address to send to. So if you're sending Bitcoin you know, out of the platform to another Bitcoin wallet, or you're paying somebody, or you're sending to an exchange, you're going to be using the withdraw button. And that withdraw button, if you click on it, it's going to bring up this address modal where you'd be able to enter a Bitcoin address. Um, a valid Bitcoin address will allow you to select next. So you can continue on with the withdrawal flow where you're going to be then designating the amount of Bitcoin that you want to be transferring in either Bitcoin terms or US dollar terms. And you can also select a fee rate for yourself as well. Again, higher fee just uh, helps you know that your transaction is going to confirm a little bit faster on the Bitcoin blockchain as opposed to a lower fee, right? Because that miner, uh, the mining the network is going to look at that transaction and say, well, I don't really have the incentive to mine this really quickly because the user paid a pretty low fee. So we do give you the option to choose a high priority or a low priority fee or even set a custom fee as well. And you'd be able to move on with the transaction flow, sign for your Bitcoin transaction, either using both of your keys or one of your keys and our key in Unchained, um, and you'd be able to send your Bitcoin transaction. So that transact tile, uh, it's small real estate on the interface here, but it does pack a punch. Of course, it's how you get Bitcoin into your vault. I just want to you know, cover again that you don't need your seed phrases or devices with you to deposit Bitcoin to your unchained vault, as long as you can access this address. However, it is really important if you're able to, confirming that address on the screen of your device. It's a really good best practice. So if you do have a device with you, um, I recommend, again, confirming on device. Uh, Phil Geiger and I did a webinar on that topic. I really, really encourage you to go check it out. Um, but as we work our way down on this vault screen, you're going to see now our keys, of course, the keys that I've named air and fire along with the unchained key. Now, as I scroll down, there's something that's somewhat new. Uh, it's this vault tools menu. 
So on this Vault Tools menu, what are, we're trying to do here is we're trying to bring forward a lot of aspects of your Unchained Vault, and really give you the power to examine a lot of things you know, without having to go digging for it, right? Without having to click on a three dot menu just to get to where you wanna go. So on this Vault Tools menu, kind of working our way down, well, this first option says address history. And I have a couple of deposits over here that I made actually this morning in preparation for showing you uh, this awesome feature. This kind of ties back to when we were looking at deposit. We say that you get a new deposit address uh, for each deposit you make into the platform. So if I look at this address history, well, what I'm probably hoping to see is I'm going to see three addresses, actually. I'm going to see this first address for this first deposit. Then I'm going to see another address for this deposit right here. And then I'm going to see another address for this address right here, my current deposit address. And I should be able to see all of those within my address history. So if I go ahead and select view here, well, that's exactly what I'm going to see. I'm going to see the address uh, that I used earlier this morning, the address I used shortly after that, you know, an entirely new address, and then this 3NY, the current address uh, on my vault as well. So this address history modal is pretty cool to go check out. And to the right-hand side of your address, you're going to see some icons over here. Um, what you can do is you can, most importantly, access that confirm on device function, where if you do have a Trezor or you do, uh, you know, you have a, a Trezor with you, you want to plug it in just to confirm that address on your device, you can certainly do it right from this address history page. So address history, pretty cool feature to go check out in that Vault Tools menu, very first thing you see. As you work down from that, you're going to see your external spend info. So this external spend info is previously behind a three dot menu. We've now pulled it forward so you can view it in this vault tools menu. If I select view across from external spend info, it's going to pull up this external spending information modal. And on this pop up modal, what I can do here is just select show information. What it's going to show me is these public keys, these extended public keys. Uh, when Carl was covering keys earlier, this is really what you're importing into the Unchained platform when you add a key. You're sharing with us your extended public key or your XPUB. So these are the keys that I've named fire and air, and I can rename these keys if I want to. But these are those public keys that I pulled in here along with the Unchained key. So my Unchained multi-sig vault is a two of three vault, meaning that if I want to move Bitcoin, I need to use two of these three keys, but there's three keys total. So my two keys, the unchained key, then there's some other information down on bottom here. Really what all of this is and why this is important, you can think about this like the blueprints to your vault, right? It's often called the treasure map to your unchained vault. If unchained, something were to happen to us, we were to disappear, our website were to, to go down. If you have the blueprints to your vault, if you have the treasure map to your unchained vault, you'd be able to take this information go to another Bitcoin multi-signature coordinator and rebuild your vault somewhere else. That's a lot of fancy terminology there, but really it's, it's pretty powerful. We have a bunch of educational materials out there that show you how to do this. I've actually done a Caravan uh, and Sparrow Wallet and Electrum focused webinar about a year ago uh, with uh, one of our senior engineers, Buck Purley. We covered this information. So using these blueprints, using this uh, vault information, you could go recover without even needing unchained.com. So what we do recommend is you pull up this screen in your vault, you click that external spend info uh, button in the vault tools menu, and you select download over here on the right hand side. And this just downloads, packages up all of this information into a nice backup file for you. And that file is okay to be downloaded, right? If somebody were to get a hold of this file, they could rebuild your vault and see your balances, but they can't move your Bitcoin because they don't have your keys. So because somebody could view your balances and they would have the treasure map to your unchained vault, you do want to keep this you know, downloaded, but still secure. We do recommend a password manager or cloud encryption if you're using OneDrive or Dropbox, somewhere where you can keep it digital, but password protected. Awesome. Let's go ahead and close this. This option is always available for you to download in the Unchained platform just by pressing view again. As we work our way down this vault tools menu, if you're using a cold card, there's kind of an advanced step that cold card users need to go through to tell their cold card about their unchained vault so their cold card can effectively sign transactions in the future. That cold card configuration file and the instructions on how to configure your cold card 
are available here as well. We provide nice screenshots. Of course, our support teams are always here to help with this as well. Um, but this cold card configuration option is within reach. And you might be thinking, well, I have two treasures or I have a treasure and a ledger. This doesn't impact me. Well, if you do want to dip your toes into learning about a cold card and you want to add a cold card to your Unchained Vault, having this cold card configuration file here is kind of nice. Um, so this option is here for you as well. And then down on bottom, you're going to see a verification threshold. Um, this is going to prompt you to record a verification video, just an additional security step that we offer alongside two-factor authentication and the ability to, of course, reset your password. This verification video is something that you can record, and Connor's going to be touching on it uh, briefly in just a little bit. But that option is now pulled forward for you, too, right in this Vault Tools menu. So all of that, you know, kind of did a lot of talking there, covered a lot of things. I encourage you to log into your Unchained Vault. Uh, go to your Vault page and scroll down to this Vault Tools menu and give it uh, an examination for yourself. Now, one thing that's not on this Vault Tools menu uh, that might be on some others is because, well, I created this Vault, you know, recently, right? I did these transactions today. Um, but what you can also do for your Vaults is pull monthly statements for your Vault. That's going to show you the inflows and outflows of Bitcoin for your Vault that you can have in PDF format that you might be taking to, uh, you know, another uh, institution you might be working with that needs to see that information, that is also available for you. So real quickly, before I pass it on to Connor, I'm just going to go to my other vault, my older test vault up here, just so we can kind of see what that vault statement option looks like. Uh, this is my other vault here with just a little bit more test Bitcoin, uh, still with my same two keys. So notice I'm using just two keys, but I have multiple vaults. If I scroll down here, my vault tools menu is going to show vault statements. And for my vault statements, I could select view, and I'd be able to then pull a statement for the preceding months with, with which my vault has been active. And that's gonna download a PDF statement for you. So that option is available for you, again, for the prior months, not the current and active month. Um, so with that, I'm going to uh, stop my screen sharing session and hand it on over to Connor to do a deeper dive because you know even right now, you might be looking at well, we have loans over here. You have buy Bitcoin. What's that all about? Uh, Connor, this is really your time to shine. So uh, I'll pull the presentation forward and remove my screen share. And Connor, over to you. And you might be on mute there, by the way. Yep. Thank you, Tyler. And great job, Carl. It's great to meet everyone. And as you see here on my screen, I, I want to reiterate some things that Carl and Tyler brought up, right? They go over the security. Concierge is onboarding. Their main goal is to make sure your Bitcoin is the, in the most secure solution at all times. And what we truly believe in here at Unchained is as Bitcoin becomes the standardization of money, we'll naturally become your one-stop shop for all your financial needs. And so part of those financial needs is our IRA product, our loan product, as well as our buy Bitcoin. And so right on our dashboard, you have access to all these financial services. And I'll start with the IRA. So as we navigate here to our top right, you'll see I logged into my personal account. So I hit this drop down menu. I have an IRA account and a business account. Let's say I wanted to add a new IRA account. I would select add account, and you could select this option right here. Once this option is selected, you then have the full support of our IRA team, which is going to essentially prompt you each step of the way. And I saw an, a, a question in the question box by Bob Anderson. Bob asked, are you able to, to store U.S. dollars and then buy in chunks towards that IRA account? That's a great question. But the way our IRA rollover process works is we're going to have you establish a new custodian IRA with Solera National Bank, who is our financial product. And once you make any contributions to that new custodian, once it lands in that bank account, our trading desk purchased the Bitcoin right away. And so this IRA team, as I mentioned, is gonna be prompting you each step of the way. And we also have a loans team, right? A loans operations team where you can submit a loan request directly on the left-hand screen here and select apply for a loan. On top of that, 
on our homepage at unchained.com, we also have a loan calculator where if you wanted to figure out a principal payment versus a collateral, decide which term you want to select. But more importantly, and this will be a common theme of my part here, is the idea of support. With any product that we have, you will always have the option to book a consultation and speak one-on-one -on -one with a team member here at Unchained. And so as I navigate back to my home screen here, you'll see this Buy Bitcoin button. This is the gold standard of buying Bitcoin moving forward. It's the only product on the market where you could purchase Bitcoin and have it deposited into cold storage. And there are a couple steps to get this enabled onto your account. Submitting a tier three profile as well as a bank account. And in order to do that, you can navigate to the top right here, select down, profile. And this is where you'd submit the tier three profile, which is a little more in-depth KYC information that we have to require being that we're offering financial services. Once that tier three profile has been submitted and approved, you'll then add a bank account. In order to do that, we'll go back into the settings, select bank account, and here is where you can link a bank account. Now there's a couple caveats to our trading desk. Being that it's over the counter, we settle all trades through wires. So if I go back to my home screen here and I decide I wanna buy Bitcoin, we'll select the buy Bitcoin button, We'll select the amount of Bitcoin we want to buy. Let's say it's $50,000. And then here, you'll select a vault. Let's say I want to send it to my Eagle vault. We're going to preview that buy, and this is going to show the statement that we're going to send to you. Now, keep in mind, this updates every three to six seconds. On top of that, once you execute this buy, you will immediately receive a trading statement. That trading statement can also be accessed in the top right corner here under documents, and you can get access to all your trade statements if needed for tax purposes. Something to keep in mind with our trading desk. Our team is operational during business hours, but our trading desk is open 24 seven. So for instance, let's say you decide to buy Bitcoin on a Saturday night. Obviously the traditional banking system, they're not open. And so, we require wires to be sent to us within 24 hours or the next business day. As far as our trading desk goes with fees, we have a sliding scale. The more Bitcoin you purchase, the less the fee. So as you can see here, between 5K to 25K purchase, there is a 1% fee, which is 100 basis points. And the more you buy, the less the fee. Now, as mentioned, this is a new launch for us. We're only active in 35 states right now, and we are working as hard as we can to get to all 50. In fact, that is our main goal for the year 2022 in the quarters to come. We also have a minimum purchase for this trading desk. There is a minimum purchase of $5,000, and for your first trade, there is a maximum purchase of 100K. Anything over $100,000, we will require a pre-wire. And so, this is all accessible directly on your platform. And if there are any questions regarding anything that Tyler or Carl brought up in terms of your key security, in terms of the technicalities and how to use those keys on our platform, we also have a support team. But before I get into the support team, as being part of the client solutions team, there are a couple of things I like to check on to make sure that my clients are doing from security aspect. So after you, you get onboarded by these two pros, Tyler and Carl, usually we have a debrief call with a client solutions team member. And there are a couple security aspects I like to ensure that every client that I'm in charge of make sure they take. And there's three boxes I like to ask. I like to check three boxes. First and foremost, do you have your keys separated into two geographical locations to start? Next thing I like to ask is, do you have two-factor authentication? And if you don't, a way to find that is go back up here in the settings, select settings, security. You can see right here where you can enable that two-factor authentication. And then the last thing I like to ask is the option to record an identity video. 
This identity video is essentially a baseline recorded video that we will refer to whenever Unchained is being asked to co-sign a transaction. And so that identity video can also be found on your vault. And if you scroll all the way bottom to vault tools, the video verification threshold. This is where you could set a threshold. Let's say the threshold is 10%. Anytime Unchained is being asked to co-sign a transaction that's above that 10% threshold, we will require video verification. And so this all boils down to the security of your Bitcoin. Tyler mentioned earlier about that, that configuration file, right? The whole idea here is at no point in time does Unchained want to be a single point of failure for you, even if our platform's down. On top of that, if we think about security options, let's say a key gets compromised. And let's think about the steps that someone would have to take to get access to your Bitcoin. First and foremost, they'd have to get a hold of your device, understand that it's a part of a multi-signature address, get, at, get through the PIN, get access to your account, get through your password, get through your two-factor authentication, and then even if they jump through all those hoops and they decide to ask Unchained to co-sign that transaction, that video verification threshold is, is the final sweeping net that our team monitors 24 seven. And so from a security aspect, as clients get onboarded, that's what I love to ensure. On top of that, we have a whole support team here. Not only a team, but we have the resources that are just clicks away. And so one thing I wanna point out here, if I navigate back to our home screen, is our knowledge base. This knowledge base is essentially a library of information and resources that you could ask any questions. Today we went over key checks. Let's see what happens if we type in key checks. It'll take you through everything you need to know and how your key operates on our platform. And if I head back to our knowledge base, I keep mentioning our client service team. They're the best in the business. If you were to send an email to hello at Unchained, you will have a client service member respond to that email, but more importantly, you have a phone number here, which we have active members monitoring our phones, that if anyone on this webinar right now wants to call in, you can see if Nick, Jose, or Steven's gonna answer. And so with this support, with this knowledge base, the last thing I wanna show the, the group here is our video library. These are recorded videos, not only are the webinars that we're doing now, but they also have self-help tutorials of every aspect of our platform, whether it's key checks, whether it's deposits, as Tyler mentioned before, whether it's Caravan, right? We're looking to be your all-encompassing Bitcoin company that starts with the sole security of you having full unilateral permissionless access to your Bitcoin. And so on that note, I'm going to pass it back to Tyler, and I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you, Connor. I uh, love hearing about those additional services that are really just, you know, one click away. Want to be that one stop shop, uh, not only for services, but also for support and Bitcoin navigation, right? It's the whole reason why we do these continuing education webinars and the Bitcoin basic series. We really want to empower you through education alongside offering you uh, the Bitcoin standard way of buying Bitcoin directly to uh, your own keys and cold storage. So uh, we're going to move on to our Q&A section for the live uh, viewers on the webinar. Uh, for everybody else, thank you for joining. Uh, really encourage you to, if you do have a question, you're viewing this on YouTube a little bit later, uh, put a question down, comment on the YouTube video. Uh, we'll make sure to, to see it and get back to you. Um, and then be on the lookout for next month's continuing education webinar. Again, the first Friday of every month. So the next one's going to be uh, November and we got December coming up looking to wrap up 2022 strong with some pretty important topics. Um, so be on the lookout for those and thank you for joining.